Hi there! If you are a massage or physiotherapist and want to relieve your patients from back or hip pain, then this video is for you. Here you can learn easy to apply techniques to treat the iliopsoas muscle, often one of the causes behind non-specific lower back pain or hip pain. The renowned massage teacher Ulf Pape from Berlin will show you ways to fill your patients with enthusiasm. My name is Andrea, I'm your audio guide through this video and here we go. We position one leg bent on the bench so that the lower back of our patient who is lying on their side can rest against our thigh. The patient bends their leg, the lower one that is facing away from us, with their equilateral hand. We start with a relief technique, gently pushing the patient's pelvis downwards that he is away from us several times. In the next maneuver, we treat the psoas muscle from the ventral side, with our other hand resting on the transverse processes of the lumbar spine, to where pain from the psoas muscle radiates in case of trigger point activity. To make sure that we really and effectively reach the trigger points of the psoas muscle from the ventral side, our finger pads need to melt very, very deep into the tissue. This is only possible if we position them next to the straight abdominal muscle about four fingers wide below the navel and then have our finger pads feel their way forward very slowly and gently in accord with the patient's exhalation. We get to the trigger points of the psoas muscle marked X1 in the graph only shortly before reaching the spine region. Once there, we don't move our finger pads but just keep the pressure for about 10 seconds. The next maneuver is a passive stretching of the iliopsoas muscle. To do so, we use the hand that was previously positioned on the lumbar spine and slowly move the patient's leg backwards into hip extension to stretch the muscle, stay in this position for a short moment before moving the leg back in the other direction, that is back into hip flexion. We repeat this movement several times to demonstrate the functional movement of the iliopsoas muscle to our patient so that they understand its main function as the prime mover of hip flexion. We then move the patient's leg backwards once again to perform a passive pre-stretching and ask them to build up strength and try to flex their hip against our pull which results in an isometric contraction of the iliopsoas muscle. The patient should keep this contraction for about 15 to 20 seconds before they relax again. Then we perform a 10 second long post isometric stretching, this time actively supported by the patient. Now we move the patient's leg once again into hip extension and back into flexion combined with a slight outward rotation and then ask the patient to take over and carry out this movement actively. Our hand, no longer needed to support the patient's leg, goes back to the transverse processes of the lumbar spine. Our other hand, the one positioned on the ventral side, more or less serves as a stabilizer as our fingers are, so to speak, pushed out of the abdominal tissue by the muscular movement. Once out, our finger pads move over to the trigger point region of the iliacus muscle. If there is some trigger point activity, the pain will radiate to the hip region. All our finger pads glide over the iliac crest into the fossa to find the iliacus muscle and then move on to the lesser trochanter where the iliacus and psoas major muscles insert and where we have the third trigger point region of the iliopsoas. After these maneuvers, the iliopsoas muscle will be much less tight and tense. We move on to stretch the adductor muscles of the hip. Again, we start with a passive pre-stretching and then ask our patient to work against this pull for about 15 to 20 seconds with an isometric contraction of the adductor muscles. 
After that, we perform a post-isometric stretching, once again actively supported by the patient. The sequence ends with the same relief technique that we used at the beginning, then we repeat the entire sequence on the other side. Our patient now lies on the back with the bottom near the edge of the couch, one leg bent, the other one dangling freely. We stand next to the bent leg and stabilize it with our own body, as you can see here. This also holds the patient's pelvis in a stable position. Now we take the other leg and bend it as well and once again position our finger pads next to the straight abdominal muscle slightly below the navel where they can melt deeper and deeper into the tissue each time the patient exhales until they reach the potential trigger point region of the iliopsoas muscle near the spine, the region marked X1 in the graph. We work as gently and carefully as in the previous sequence and let ourselves be guided by the patient's breathing. Once our finger pads have reached their final destination, they remain there for about 10 seconds before we release the pressure. We can repeat the same maneuver with our finger pads positions slightly higher, that is a bit more in cranial direction. Then we use our thumbs or finger pads to give pressure in the potential trigger point region of the iliacus muscle, marked X2 in the graph. After that, we perform a passive pre-stretching of the iliopsoas muscle, keep the pressure for a moment and then ask the patient to work against the pressure of our hand for about 15 to 20 seconds. Then we stretch the muscle once again, this time actively supported by the patient. Now we passively move the patient's leg from hip flexion to hip extension and back again with a slight outward rotation to demonstrate the functional movement of the iliopsoas muscle and then ask the patient to carry out the same movement actively. While the patient does so, we first position our finger pads on the psoas major muscle and give a slight pressure. Then we use our thumb pads like a pair of pliers on the potential trigger points of the iliacus muscle in the iliac fossa, repeatedly changing their position so that they can reach the entire palpable part of the muscle. Then one thumb pad moves down to the joint insertion of the iliacus and psoas major muscles on the lesser trochanter. That's the region marked X3 in the graph. In this way, like in the previous sequence, the patients can actively relieve themselves from tension in the iliopsoas muscle. And finally, we bend both of the patient's legs into hip flexion before repeating the entire sequence on the other side. That much for these two ways of treating the iliopsoas muscle which should be treated in all patients with lower back or hip problems. If you like this video, please subscribe to Ulf's channel. There you can find many other tutorials of this kind and new ones are always in the making. Thank you for watching.